I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye will go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. A life that is completely consecrated to God and its purposes is like a seed that is sown. It is wonderful to see the seed die and bring forth fruit. It does not take a large seed to bring forth a large plant, nor a beautiful seed to bring forth beauty. Christian life is like that. It can be likened to a pandemic that knows no boundaries of geography nor any limitations by time. It is like an atomic chain reaction capable of producing a cataclysmic blast going on unabated. Such was the life of an unknown preacher who lived his life following the word of God, living according to the book. We are going to have a glimpse of the ripples, the waves, the storms, and the tsunami that his life produced in his village, country, and the whole world. His name is not known on this side of time, but it brought about a chain reaction, which nothing on earth could contain. There was a famous painter, Stenberg, in the country of Germany, who was dissatisfied with the life he was living and began to seek after the truth. I feel utterly miserable. I am worn out by my attempts at self-improvement. I seem to be a disgrace to my own self and to all with whom I company. Why, Stenberg? You are much better than those around here. Why do you feel so downcast? I've been seeking salvation earnestly. But I don't know why I, I seem like I'm groping in the dark. Look here, Stenberg. I'll take you to just the person you need. He walks according to the word of God. He will lead you into the truth and the truth will set you free. Yes, my friend. Do it at the earliest. I want to see reality in my life. So Stenberg was led to that preacher who passionately sought to be Christ-like. And he was led to offer his life to Jesus. He was marvelously transformed and wanted to do something for his Savior in return. As he was not very eloquent, he used his one great talent and painted the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus, inscribing the following words. Hoc fresi pro te, quid fresi pro me. All this 
have I done for thee? What hast thou done for me? This painting became a masterpiece and was given to the art gallery at Dusseldorf. As people came to the gallery, Stenberg would stand unseen by others and be sending up petitions to the one who hears and answers prayer that the work he had done might put heavenly and eternal desires in the hearts of the viewers. Now you are going to see the next link of the chain. A young German nobleman, Count Zinzendorf, was out on a tour to further his education. As he came upon the work of Stenberg in the art gallery of Dusseldorf, he stood there as though struck by a bolt of lightning. He gazed and gazed upon the love-filled face of the suffering one. The inscription captivated him. All this have I done for thee. What hast thou done for me? to the fellowship of your suffering and give me a life of service to you. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. <laughs> 